Hello, everyone. Welcome to theCUBE here in Palo Alto covering Mobile World Congress 2017. Hashtag MWC17. I'm John Furrier. We are here with Dan Law, who's the Vice President of Product Marketing at SAP. SAP HANA Cloud, now named HANA Cloud, or SAP Cloud. Dan, thanks for coming in and, and talking about Mobile World Congress. You bet, and I'm happy to talk about <laughs> SAP Cloud Platform. All right, so, the big, news, so the big today. news, there's a lot of stuff going on with Mobile World Congress, but let's just get down to some, from SAP's perspective. You guys have changed the name from SAP HANA Cloud Platform to SAP Cloud Platform. Yeah, that's right, that's why, right. So why that nuance there? What's the specific uh, uh, point there? It's way more than just dropping a word from the, the, uh, the name of the product. It's really about repositioning where SAP is. So SAP has been an application company for forever, but as companies move to now from mode one, which is kind of application running, to mode two, which is doing more about agility, optimizing their enterprise, digital transformation, we have to have an offer in that second place. And that's where the SAP cloud platform fits. So things like um, IoT services and integration services and over 40 services we offer on the platform, we're now ha helping companies become more agile by being very easy and able to personalize any SAP asset, any SAP app. So you have S for HANA, you want to personalize it, customize it, you use Cloud Platform to do that. You want to integrate success factors in with your on-premise apps, SAP or otherwise, you use yeah. Cloud Platform to do that. A lot okay? has changed over the past year. At Sapphire last year, we talked about uh, this at theCUBE yeah. uh, in Orlando. I interviewed you specifically about the cloud uh, momentum. And one of the things that was striking, and we talked specifically about SAP had this install base customer uh, set, which you guys have some of the biggest names mm -hmm. in business from powering by SAP, and then new sets of developers uh, onboarding. And significant was the Apple announcement where you guys were partnering with Apple Computer, and, and Apple doesn't usually go up on stage with many partners, and That's it's right. very rare, and they were on stage with you guys. And this was really a seminal moment because this kind of brings uh, two worlds together. It brings the existing SAP software world mm -hmm. and the Apple world. So lots changed there. I know the news uh, that's hitting around Apple's GA and general availability yeah. of the iOS kit, but also it's the growth of the cloud within SAP and the satisfaction that you guys are going through that journey. Give us an update on those two fronts. The iOS news mm -hmm. on general ability, what does that mean? Yeah. And two, how is the satisfaction yeah, of yeah. SAP yeah. Yeah. inside the entire, across the business? You bet, you bet. So, really exciting with the Apple SDK. When we met last year, I sat on the edge of the bed and told <laughs> you how great it's going to be, okay? And we really hadn't defined exactly what was going to be in the SDK. We, we, we already had all the parts and pieces to be able to take an iPhone device and pull it back in to access SAP applications, but we really didn't have much native work that we had thought through with Apple on the delivery side on the mobile device. And so we've added a number of controls that Apple is actually adding in to their system into the iOS 10, and we're actually creating applications taking advantage of these new controls. So as enterprise applications work in a little bit more complex way than uh, let's say playing Candy Crush on your, on your iPhone, right? We've come up with new controls to make it more easy for someone like a project manager to do project management uh, over their, their day, or a service technician to do uh, how they look at their appointments, how they're going to look at parts and pieces they need to to put into different different service appointments. So it's been a really great collaboration. And then the other thing we're doing is we're adding SAP Academy or iOS Academy. And the iOS Academy will be aimed at training a million SAP developers and 10 million Apple developers on how to use this SDK, how to think about delivering enterprise apps using this native iOS environment. And what's the impact to the customer? Because Apple essentially, obviously it's, it's their phone, so you're talking about a mobile native app. Yes, exactly. And taking a software cloud model to the phone. Is that kind of the, the key point? Yeah, it's take, you know, SAP has been awesome at business processes and really funky at how it's, it's displayed on screens. I mean, I know when I started working yeah. at SAP, every screen I had to look for where the next key was, okay? Apple is just the opposite. They are awesome at the yeah. UI, but not 
known for the greatest business processes. So we're marrying yeah. those two things together. And Bill and, McDermott has always been high on the Apple. Remember, I remember four Sapphires going, he's holding up the iPad saying, that's right. this is going to power our analytics business. Which and, he was, and, he was, and he was right on that. And he was, he's driven us to make that yeah. happen. Okay, <laughs> and Apple's come along, which has been really great. And, and again, now we're delivering. Um, How is this. the sassification going on? Because workloads as a service is a theme that comes up a lot, and you see hybrid cloud certainly driving a lot of that momentum. Yeah. Hybrid cloud is not as sexy as AI and autonomous vehicles, but certainly it's a lot of uh, brute force action going on. People yeah. are, for, yeah. are really moving across to the hybrid cloud. That's right. Hybrid cloud is going to be with us for at least 10 years, right? And everybody thought, okay, the cloud is going to be awesome. As an LOB, I'm just going to pick my app, whether that's CRM or HCM or whatever, and I'm going to have this awesome app that I'm just going to be able to run in my business. And then they figure out, oh, as a line of business, this is hard to manage, I'm going to give it back to IT. And IT says, wow, you know, the HCM guys are not tied in with workforce management, right? There's no, yeah. nothing between uh, 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 how, how we're managing our people and how we're managing our workforce, or how we're doing our pipeline with how we're managing our supply chain, right? You know, so the satisfaction what we're providing with cloud platform is the ability to tie those things together. So native integration services to be able to tie things like success factors or believe it or not, Salesforce mm -hmm. into SAP delivery systems, supply chain systems, bringing ecosystems together using SAP Cloud Platform. Um, so the personalization of all the SaaS apps, integration of the SaaS apps into the enterprise, and then actually working with customers to create ecosystem hubs, believe it or not. So we've got customers that have actually said, Hey, I'm, a, I'm a, a manufacturer, but I've got a lot of information about what's going on in the manufacturing process and how my customers are using my products. I'm going to build a hub on the cloud platform and get all my customers and partners working together on that hub, and now I'm actually selling information and allow me to sell more of my product. So we see that happening too. We're at Dan Law, the Vice President of Product Marketing with SAP, uh, breaking down the Mobile World Congress 17 coverage. I'm John Furrier here in theCUBE. Dan, I want you to take a minute to, um, just lay out all the news and the key announcements that's happening this week for SAP uh, at Mobile World Congress, and in context to the backdrop uh, of the key things that are happening uh, in terms of the trends at the show. Yeah, so I'll talk mostly about the cloud platform content, so there's some other things happening with SAP, but from a cloud pat platform perspective, it really is the shift to cloud platform as a strategic platform for the company in the cloud. So that's really big. Along with that, the iOS SDK we've already talked about. We're going into beta on our IoT services. So we've now got over 40 protocols that we're supporting. Uh, we've got device management, device provisioning, uh, dashboards for monitoring and, and managing those. So the IoT services, which will be the foundation for our portfolio of apps that we deliver, is all going to be on cloud platform. So we're delivering that service. They're going to announce uh, some things in the Leonardo portfolio, which is our IoT applications. Those work together hand in glove. Some other things, some, some other bits and bytes, we're opening data centers in Japan and China, so we're uh, hitting the Asia Pacific market pretty hard, allowing customers to take Those their- SAP data centers? SAP cloud, data centers. SAP cloud. To run SAP cloud in Japan and China with backup and recovery, disaster recovery, HA in between those data centers. Okay, and then also we're, we're providing the capability for customers to bring their own applications onto our cloud if they want to run them close to their cloud applications, their SAP cloud applications. So, you know, a VM style of, of, uh, of service that we bring, but you know, we're not com going to compete against uh, AWS in that, but if you want to bring that next to a, an SAP app, boom, you can do that very easily. So, so I want to ask you about some of the hot trends that we're tracking on SiliconANGLE mm -hmm. and the Cube, and certainly looking at the data. It's pretty obvious that IoT is mm -hmm. the hottest. Yeah. I would call tangible trend. Yeah. AI is the hottest, you know, hype coming, trend. Coming trend. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's. A, I think AI is, is legit, and my, I'm a big fan of AI. But I think it gives people a, more of a mental model yeah. uh, than IoT. IoT is like, oh, industrial, I, Internet of Things. It's kind of esoteric to the mainstream. AI is robots, flying drones, yeah. flying saucers, flying cars. So it gives people kind of a feel for kind of uh, what machine learning and IOT can, 
can point to. Yeah. Um, and so I want you to talk about um, what you guys got going on there. And the other thing that comes up from a customer standpoint I want to get your, your thoughts and commentary on is the number one thing that comes up besides topic on, on IoT is integration. Mm -hmm. Integration points is critical. So open cloud is something that you guys have promoted. IoT kind of brings that to the table. How do I bridge IoT into the cloud? How do I integrate? either my on-prem or clouds. These are, these are the kind of threads that are that are being discussed right now. You forgot web. big data. You, yeah. you, forgot, you forgot that one too, you know? So, <laughs> hey, I worked for an AI company in the 90s after AI was dead, okay? <laughs> AI, AI was hot in the 80s. It's, I worked for an AI company in the 90s. It was dead until today. And it's I'm back just again. shocked it is back, right? <laughs> you know? So, so uh, the AI piece. By the way, machine learning hasn't really changed much since 10 years ago, exactly, 20 years ago either. either as well. So, but we're, we're building all of our AI and machine learning capabilities Abilities using SAP Cloud as the base, yeah. okay? So we're bringing in some open source technology from Google and others, but we're going to be building services on top of Cloud Platform that will allow you to build machine learning AI apps as well as delivering bespoke applications like matching invoices and some other things mm -hmm. that, that make sense for SAP. So Well, the IoT thing you bring up them, you know, in joking about AI, I think the reality is is that AI has been around for a long time, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. as well as machine learning. But I think that the, the trend that comes up that makes it so peaked for real time right now is cloud horsepower is awesome, almost infinite compute mm -hmm. power yep. available, yep. and the tsunami of data. Yes. So you combine the fact that there's all this new data sources yep. with horsepower, and now with 5G dropping on main stage with Intel's announcement, you're seeing a confluence of a new fabric being kind of weaved together. Mm -hmm. That's interesting mm -hmm. because now you have the compute, so that's yep. not a bottleneck anymore. Yep. Yep. So overhead, whether it's security encryption and or security techniques, machine learning goes away. Yep. AI can now do other things. So this is an interesting. It's an interesting area, right? And you kind of named it. You have to have the ability to ingest all this stuff through an IOT type of streaming capability. You got to be able to analyze it in real time. That's our memory capability. We talked about the, the AI analyze it in real time. Uh, the one thing we haven't talked about is you have to have a big data repository to be able to troll through months and years of data. And we've actually added the AltaScale um, a company to our portfolio. So now AltaScale is part of SAP. We're renaming that Big Data Services, but it'll be basically AltaScale. So now you've got Hadoop in the cloud. So you've got IoT, you've got your in-memory capability through HANA in, mm -hmm. in the cloud, you've got your Hadoop in the cloud. All of that is one piece of cloth mm -hmm. to us. You can apply IoT against that, you can apply AI against that, you can apply machine learning against that, and guess what, blockchain against that as well. That's a little bit early for us, yeah. but, but that it's is- It's on the well. horizon for sure. Yeah, exactly. I and mean, this yeah. is basically talking about where you process the data, and obviously the IoT edge is something yep. that Wikibon research team on our, on our team's been actively pursuing. Um, so I want to ask you to explain a little bit about this IoT service you guys announced. What mm -hmm. is that about? I mean, how, do, how would you describe that capability in the, in the, in the SAP cloud? Well, it's, it's, it's funny. IoT is all about streaming data, right, if you think about it. And I've been in streaming data since 2008 because we were heavy into financial services and understanding the, the transactions. So mm -hmm. we were running algorithmic yeah. trading back in 2008 and we, we bought a couple of companies that did that. And you would say streaming data to people and they would go like this, right? <laughs> but now with the iPhone and people understanding that their iPhone is a sensor device mm -hmm. and people now finally get that, well data streaming is, is a big deal, right? Autonomous vehicles highlights that Big time. Exactly. And 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 you kind of hit the nail on the head when you said you have to have not only an analysis inside the data center in the cloud, but you have to push as much as you can of that out to the edge. And so part of what we're delivering as IoT services is a whole edge set of components that will actually do some of the analytics out at the edge in the in the hubs, like what Intel provides or Huawei or Dell or other companies with these gateway hubs, as well as capturing streaming data, doing store and forward of that data. So it's pushing IoT out to the edge for real-time decision making, bringing it back into the data center for maybe a little bit more real-time deeper analysis, and then connecting it to a big data source so you can actually troll through that over time and say over the last six months, here's a supplier that's doing great, here's a supplier that's giving me not so great parts, right? So all of those pieces for customers at the end of the day is really important, right? Making them more agile in the IoT environment, making them more connected in the IoT environment and big data environment, yeah. right? And connecting the enterprise to that. So it, it, it's all helping 
customers from, from our view. Well, congratulations on the news. Well, first, the name change. I think symb symb symbolizes a cloud-centric philosophy company-wide, which is yeah. great, a satisfaction uh, of SAP, which is huge for your customer base. Yeah. But also the Apple news I've always been bullish on because that brings in an opportunity for developers to work with you and vice versa, mm -hmm. and the monetization to, for developers to play in your ecosystem certainly is a great opportunity, so those are the two, two big just think, Just think about that Apple piece, right? They can take, now take a process, they can build a set of controls, build a new app, and then monetize that in the App Center. That will be very cool. Yeah. Monetizing enterprise applications or extensions to enterprise processes. Well, that's one of the reasons why enterprise cool. is super hot right now in in because the consumer market is obviously you've seen those unicorns, you see Airbnb, yep. you see Uber, all the examples we talk about, Netflix, Amazon, enabling all that good stuff and, and others. But now the enterprise is sexy, one, because there's some real transformation going on from the yep. network to the app layer. Right. But there's business to be done, there's actual opportunities right. for people to have their work of art, the developers, exactly. if you will, be monetized. And, and if you put IoT and big data and yeah. AI behind all of that, yeah. and then make it look beautiful on the device, yeah. that's beautiful. IoT is a real trend. I mean, it's, I mean that it's is, it's it's definitely happening right now, and I think yeah. that's where the, where the meat on the bone is in my mind. Okay, Dan, final question for you, for the folks watching and are, are paying attention to uh, Mobile World Congress and in general in, in the world. What is the key thing that you think they should walk away with about SAP Cloud now? What's with the new name, uh, with the Apple News, all this good stuff happening at Mobile World Congress. What is the key walk away message that you like to, to send to folks to know uh, the current state of SAP Cloud? What's the, yeah. what's, the what's the key message? So I would say the key message is we've talked about it, but now we're delivering, SAP is all in on the cloud. We're not only delivering the SAP Cloud Platform, but also Esferhana Cloud as well. Tons of apps being built using SAP Cloud Platform. SAP is all in on the cloud, all in in Mode 2 computing to help our customers. That's the big news. Dan Lal, Vice President of Product Marketing at SAP Cloud. I'm Jeff Ray, watching a special two-day coverage of Mobile World Congress 2017 here in the studios in Palo Alto, covering it from Silicon Valley. We've got folks on the ground bringing you more action after the short break. Oh!